Good evening, everyone. We have breaking news right now about uh, who is actually here to, to help out with this. That's right. Governor Bob McDonald touring operation centers in Virginia and, and Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Let's get right to the governor if we can. And uh, his team here in Norfolk. I've been to Hampton and uh, Virginia Beach in the last couple of hours. Uh, we've had numerous calls with uh, state and local uh, officials, the congressional delegation, uh, the legislators. Uh, Senator Northam is here from the Eastern uh, Shore uh, and Norfolk. All right, that was Governor Bob McDonald. He was he was he was touring with uh, Congressman Scott Rigel earlier. Some of the operation centers in Hampton Roads. And what he indicated so far, which we haven't been able to get too much of that yet, but because we're having signal breakup at this point, but they've already gone through Hampton, Virginia Beach, and some of the other localities just to find out where some of our uh, centers are, emergency shelters right now, and emergency operations, just to see where we actually are right now in in lieu of the storm. Here we, we're going to go back to it. That, uh, put a number of things in place. We prepositioned a large number of state police officers to work with local officials. We've authorized the call up of 500 members of the National Guard. 300 are already up and in place uh, to support this region of the state. We've got Department of Forestry out with uh, chainsaw crews in this uh, area. We have tested all of the tunnels all over Hampton Roads to make sure the floodgates are working, and they are. We have uh, advanced crews here from the Department of Transportation to engage in debris removal and all those other things that uh, need to be done. Uh, I would like to say a couple things to the uh, residents. Um, we have a number of plans in place with state, local, and federal government agencies cooperating. Uh, but ultimately, the citizens have to know this is a very dangerous storm. It is going to be a, a Category 2, it looks like, when it uh, crosses the Virginia-North Carolina border. Uh, there are going to be hurricane force winds throughout this entire region. Uh, there will be tropical storm force winds for as much as 21 hours as this storm goes through the region starting uh, late tonight into uh, Sunday morning. This is a very dangerous situation. There will be widespread power outages. It will take a while to restore power. And so the citizens need to do everything they can right now today to be prepared uh, with water, with batteries, uh, with all those things that they need to be ready. If you're in a mandatory evacuation area, which uh, about uh, 40 or so, about a third of uh, Norfolk is, you must cooperate with law officials. Please leave and leave now, because what's going to happen tonight or tomorrow morning when tropical storm force winds get to be at 39 mile an hour or more, the Department of Transportation will close some of the tunnels and close the bridges. And so getting out uh, from 460 or 58 or 64 is not going to be possible. You'll have to use alternate routes. So the mayor and his team have made absolutely the right decisions in ordering mandatory evacuations in the low-lying areas with a three to six foot storm surge and so much of Norfolk being uh, very low, uh, there's potential for widespread flooding in the city of Norfolk. So if you've got if you live in one of those zones and you've gotten a call or a police officer's knocked at your door and said to evacuate, you've got to do it. It's for your own safety. There are a number of shelters that are set up around Norfolk that the mayor will talk about. And uh, I just want everybody to know we have got good plans in place. But ultimately, we want people to be good neighbors. Check on your neighbors. Find a place to stay with relatives. Uh, take care of people that you know that are elderly or that have medical problems near you. Uh, find ways to store up on potable water in case there's a problem with the sewage treatment plants in the area and be patient after the storm there's going to be impediments on the road there's going to be widespread power outages it's going to take a while to restore but working together and being good neighbors and with this excellent team here in the city of norfolk at the emergency operations center we will get through it and we'll have uh, as prompt a response as we can so with that i'd like to introduce the leader here of the city of norfolk uh, mayor paul frank Thank you, Governor. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of two of my colleagues on the City Council, the Vice Mayor Anthony Burford, as well as Councilwoman Angela Williams. Uh, I think the Governor has said it well. I would like to make a, a couple of comments about this really unprecedented um, working relationship we have with the Governor and his team. Uh, we've, in my 18 years, we've had a lot of the Governors visit, uh, visit us after storms. The Governor's the first one that's been here before a storm hit us, and we appreciate that. Um, he's had several phone calls to uh, all of the mayors 
in Hampton Roads. He actually called me on my cell phone last night, uh, I, I mean, to express his personal concern. He actually suggested that we think hard about moving up the uh, evacuation uh, uh, time schedule, which we did, and we're glad that we did because the storm is actually coming at us faster than we had realized, uh, you know, just last evening. Um, uh, the city has uh, prepared to open up five shelters right now. They'll open up at six, and we, we'll have a list of them uh, for you. We, we do have mandatory evacuations, evacuations in all of the low-lying areas uh, in the city, and as the governor said, that's, you know, that represents the homes and of about, you know, over 30 percent of the population of the city. Our police have been going door to door. Um, right now, the evacu they're supposed to evacuate by 8 in the morning, but we're urging them to leave sooner than that because we'll be into a heavy downpour with strong winds by then. So uh, let me just stop there again and say how much we appreciate the governor's uh, personal concern about the city. And, and of course, we'll be moving quickly as soon as the storm moves out of here. Uh, to uh, assess the damage and then begin the repair work. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. The one last thing I'd like to say is people right now need uh, information. And there are plenty of things to do if they stay posted to the TVs, uh, the radio, read the newspaper. But we have a uh, website. It's www.vaemergency.gov that gives a lot of information about uh, evacuation routes, about shelters, about how to prepare for storms. That will be very helpful. Uh, the mayor uh, has his team here with their local government website that also has a lot of information. Please use that as opposed to calling 911, but absolutely use 911 if it's a legitimate emergency. So with that, we'd be glad to uh, answer any questions. We've got a lot of the team here. Governor, how many people throughout the entire state, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton, percent are we think it's probably in the neighborhood of, uh, of a couple hundred thousand. Uh, Virginia Beach is somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 55 to 60,000. Uh, Pocosin has got uh, about 50,000. Uh, the mayor's got about 80,000 about 80, here. So it's approaching over, over a couple hundred thousand people. And uh, the great news, we've got a lot of lessons learned from Isabel, a lot of new systems that have been improved. With reverse 911 calls, we have law enforcement now calling them and saying you need, to, you need to get out. We've got right here a great effort by the mayor with law enforcement officers going to the door and saying you're in this danger zone, you need to get out now because bridges and tunnels will be closed in the morning, move. So it's working much better. So uh, I uh, flew down 64, we can tell people are listening because 64 is moving, but we have a lot of pockets with extremely heavy traffic which only will get uh, worse tonight. So people really are listening and that's a good thing. Well, the, the simple answer is no. I mean, there will be a point in time when we will pull our own public safety officials for their own uh, safety uh, off of the roadways. And um, that might occur as early as midday tomorrow as we get into the really heavy rain and, and, and storms. And folks who have not heeded the warning by now, uh, we have you know, issued this uh, mandatory evacuation. There's not much we're going to be able to do. Governor, what do you see as the biggest concern right now, specifically to the Hampton Roads area throughout Virginia? Well, I, I think it's a combination of sustained high winds. I mean, 21 hours of tropical storm force winds with five to 10 inches of rain, there are gonna be significant number of, of trees down and debris around. Uh, and uh, that means widespread uh, powder, power outages. And so uh, we want people to know these things are going to occur. Uh, it would be miraculous if we didn't have uh, those things occur. We had 75 percent of the state without power with Isabel and the way this track is shaping up uh, this uh, will be equal to or worse than Hurricane Isabel. We're concerned about the storm surge with astronomical high tides about flooding in the city of Norfolk. Uh, some places eight nine feet above uh, mean low watermark. That's a significant flooding event it could be much worse in some areas, which is why the mayor did absolutely the right thing uh, with these uh, mandatory evacuations. So it, there are many uh, concerns, and uh, that's why I'm really here today is to tell the people 
uh, and ask you to help us tell the people this is a very dangerous weather event. It may either be the most catastrophic weather event in some people's lifetime. And so take it very seriously. Plan today. There will not be time in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to have tropical storm force winds and torrential downpours. Uh, there's very little chance this track changes. If it changes, it may be for the worse, meaning tracking west, which means it'll be even worse for the city of Norfolk. So if you're going to get out, get out now. Know what to do to prepare for your families, and uh, that'll be the best way to get through this. And prepare. How yeah. prepared is the state, is the Commonwealth of Virginia? Yeah, I feel like we're in very good shape. Again, emergency operations centers have been up and running since Monday. Uh, there have been uh, daily, if not hourly, communications between the mayor's staff through our emergency operations center with some of our friends from the uh, federal government, FEMA on the ground. Uh, we've had regular uh, calls with uh, local government leaders and legislators starting a few days ago. Uh, broad uh, cooperation with the media, uh, getting the word out. Uh, nobody should be surprised that this is an incredibly dangerous storm that has the potential for catastrophic winds, flooding, and power outages. So we just want people to know this is, uh, this is the last couple hours to be serious about preparation. And uh, the better people do in the next 12 hours, the better they'll be over the next few days. If the storm does change path, does the state or the city so they really have the ability to get everybody out of here at this late stage in the game? I don't think there'll be any changes. I mean, I think the evacuations that are in place now, even with a slight shift uh, 30, 40 miles one way or the other, I think the orders will probably be in place. Now, my order was basically to empower the local governments because they are far better at knowledge of their resources, of the topography, of the historical trends here. They know better whether there's something additional that they uh, should do. We're getting updates from the National Hurricane Center every three hours. We'll have another one at five, another one at eight. If there's a dramatic shift to the west, uh, the mayor will then determine whether there's additional mandatory evacuations. But I think we're, based on everything we know and what we learned from Isabel, uh, I think we've got the right decisions made from Accomack, Northampton, uh, Norfolk, Portsmouth. Uh, they know that they're going to have sustained hurricane winds from three to six hours and 21, mile, 21 hours of tropical storm, storm force winds and what that means and the decisions have been made in an abundance of caution to get people out of here. So I think we're in a good position and uh, we've got ample state resources that are pre-positioned law enforcement, National Guard, everybody's here uh, and ready to help. Governor, do you have a, uh, is there a plan uh, for the evacuation of Tangier Island? Uh, Secretary Decker may want to, I have been exchanging calls with uh, Mayor Uker of Tangier. I know that Secretary Decker's folks have talked to them. Uh, I know many people are going to where their cars are, which means either east or west, and then evacuating from there. Uh, but uh, the people there have seen many a storm, and uh, some have chosen to uh, stay and ride it out. Secretary, you've got any other comments on that? No, I think you handled it. That's perfect, Governor. Uh, you know, every locality has their own plans. Those plans are run through Secretary Suit's office. They're run through VDAM. Uh, and there's always the sheltering in place option that gets discussed for those people who just refuse to leave. The good news about Tangier is that with the current path, they will they will not see hurricane force winds. They'll see hurricane force gusts, perhaps, but they're in the 39 to 78 mile an hour uh, uh, sustained wind uh, area, and uh, that's going to mean significant uh, erosion and perhaps flooding on the on the east side of the island. But uh, they've been through some of these before, and uh, some are leaving and some are staying, but they're, they're making the best decisions for themselves. Is there ever any thought given to name the toll on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel so those folks that are on the Eastern Shore can get out and out route? That I don't know. I didn't hear the question. Uh, have we done anything about uh, looking at eliminating the toll on the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel to get people out that way? I don't believe they have because I, I don't think we have the authority to do that, but I know Secretary Knotten has been in contact with the folks. Uh, who do have authority to move traffic and that what they're going to do, I mean, ultimately the issue is going to be when do we close, you know, when do we close it? That's, that's the We'll, we'll check on that, but issue. honestly, that is not the preferred route because that's going right up the, 
right up the path of the storm. There's no way to go going up the shore. That's uh, just going into harm's way. So we're hoping people will go, uh, will go other routes, west and north. Governor, is there an estimated number? Yeah. Is there an estimated number of total people expected to evacuate the area? No, that's similar. No, I mean, we're saying a couple hundred thousand plus mandatory. Uh, a lot of other people have heeded the voluntary evacuation warning, so it could be a 300,000 plus. I mean, we really don't know. We're just, I can only tell you from what I saw in 64 coming down here, there are a lot of people doing the right thing and uh, leaving town. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the people, even in Norfolk, where there's a mandatory evacuation order, that just may mean they move from their house a half a mile to a shelter that Mayor Frame has set up here in, in Norfolk. They're moving to higher ground in a safe area. That doesn't mean they have to head out of town, right, Mayor? That's exactly right. We just want them away from the water. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I'll let Secretary Decker talk. Uh, that's why FEMA is here. There are a large number of uh, prepositioned assets, uh, meaning everything from generators to ice. We have contracts with uh, private sector companies like Ashbrit that specialize in this to bring in everything from debris cleanup to the other things uh, that are necessary, uh, generators being a, a, a big one. Uh, the National Guard uh, is in place in those events if we have the unfortunate reality of looting in certain areas. We've got them available along with uh, a significant extra number of state police to help maintain law and order in those places. At night, without power, uh, we have to be concerned about that uh, risk. And then uh, VDOT crews and Department of Forestry crews are prepositioned to be able to do uh, as much of the cleanup of uh, limbs and down trees and so forth uh, after the fact. Madam Secretary, you got anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, or and I think Terry... Or, Secretary Sue. We've really focused our training and exercises this year on recovery. Um, we had a big exercise in May with all of the chief executive officers of all of the localities in Hampton Roads strictly on recovery. So they're very, very up to date on what needs to be done. We're also doing a huge uh, training program with 23 localities in the Hampton Roads region, and we have a uh, master plan on catastrophic recovery. So we've got, we've got some good stuff in the plans and some good stuff that we've been training, and hopefully it all comes together. And, and just to sort of bootstrap onto that, you know, recovery, you all, the media can really help us with this because one of the things we need everybody to understand is that recovery after the storm is going to be as difficult as weathering the storm or evacuating because, you know, when power is down and has to be restored, it may take a couple of days. Um, we can't rely on uh, help from our uh, contiguous jurisdictions necessarily because they're experiencing the same kind of storm patterns North Carolina and Maryland uh, we've been in touch with other states other states have reached out to us and have reached out to the governor to, to offer assistance but the one thing you can impress upon people prior to the storm is that there is going to be a recovery process and it isn't going to be overnight it's going to take a little while and the, the localities are prepared for that, the state is prepared for that, the federal government is ready to help when needed. I mean, the level of cooperation has been spectacular. I've talked to Governor O'Malley in Maryland, Governor Purdue in North Carolina. We've agreed based on where the impacts occur that we will help one another. Uh, afterwards, Governor Perry called me from Texas yesterday, Governor Scott called me from this afternoon from Florida, all pledging their help if we need things after the fact. They've got great uh, resources and so uh, we feel like we're going to have a lot of help if we need it. All right, one last question. I know we got to go. Well, I want to thank again Mayor Frame and his outstanding staff. They've done a great job in planning. Uh, we're going to do everything we can. But again, I'll close where I started, and that is uh, ultimately it's up to the citizens here to be prepared, to know what resources we can offer, but ultimately make the smart decisions, uh, planning for outages of power, a lack of drinking water. Do all those things today, and the next couple of days will be a lot better. Thank you. You've been listening to a news conference with Governor Bob McDonnell and Mayor Paul Frame in Norfolk. The message very severe, basically, that this is a very dangerous storm, in the words of Governor McDonnell, calling out 500 members of the National Guard, 300 of whom have already been dispatched, 200 on standby. You can see that officials 
are taking this storm very seriously. Governor McDonald also told us it, it, this was this sounded very critical. He said this could be one of the most catastrophic weather events in some people's lifetime, which gives you an idea of what we're up against in the next couple of days. Not only do we have um, the National Guard out, they've already repositioned state police, they've got forestry, and just as importantly, they've tested the tunnels, all of the tunnels and bridges here in Hampton Roads, and they've done uh, debris removal. All right.